We live in a world where enough food is produced to feed everyone. Yet one in nine people, and in some developing countries, one in three children, experience hunger or malnutrition. With an increasing global population and wealth, we can only expect the demand for food to increase. Furthermore, climate change is putting more pressure on the food production. So what can we do to provide nutritious food for everyone in a sustainable, inclusive and environmentally friendly way? SDG 2 Zero Hunger pledges to end hunger, achieve food security and promote sustainable agriculture. Reaching this goal requires the involvement of many parties in the food and agricultural system, such as governments, research, business, individual consumers and financial markets and institutions. As a financial economist, I will explain to you how finance can contribute to solving this problem. Thinking like a financial economist, there seems to be a puzzle. We have enough food, but still people are hungry. Perhaps something goes wrong on the kind of markets on which foods are traded. These are agricultural commodity markets. Trading foods, or more broadly agricultural commodities, plays a key role in providing food to the population and constitutes a major source of income for many developing countries and individuals around the world. Agriculture is the single largest employer in the world. Around 3 billion people, 40% of global population depend on agriculture to pay for food and other cost of living. The majority of world's hungry people live in developing agricultural countries, where poverty is most profound among food crop farmers. The situation is worsening in South America, Southern Asia and most regions of Africa. So, what does go wrong on agriculture commodity markets? Quite simply, people do not only starve because food is too expensive. Rather, it is the volatility of prices that hits poor producers harder. Commodity prices are in fact highly volatile, and this volatility has been increasing over time. More volatility means more volatile income of food producers, but also more problems with planning food production, leading to periods of food shortages or excessive production that is at risk of being wasted or more severely damage the environment. Let me give you some examples. Between 2000 and 2004, coffee prices fell from 1 US dollar and 20 cents per pound to around 45 cents per pound. This price slump affected around 25 million households that depended on coffee production worldwide. They suffered from severe income drop. Dropping agricultural prices led to the crisis in Brazil and Argentina in the late 90s. Paraguay, the world's fourth largest soybean exporter, saw the value of its soybean exports rise and then fall by over 400 million US dollars when soybean prices fluctuated between 2003 and 2006. Such fluctuating revenues makes fiscal planning extremely difficult, and as a consequence, investment in infrastructure, healthcare, and education suffer. Rising commodity prices can also have disastrous consequences, as farmers and agricultural countries can be tempted to engage in straightforward exploitations and focus on the current extensive consumption with no regard for long-term planning or environmental concerns, which are critical to growing food. For example, a rising cocoa prices and global demand for chocolate became major drivers for the chocolate industry's irresponsible land exhaustion in Ivory Coast and Ghana. That led to a loss of extensive areas of rainforest and endangerment of local chimpanzee and elephant habitats. Now you will appreciate that volatility is something that financial economists talk about. The next question is, what can we do about those price swings? Well, financial markets can provide the economic tools that are needed to stabilize commodity producers' income. For example, commodity futures or options exchanges allow commodity producers to use financial products to transfer their price risk to outside investors who are willing to take on that risk, thus making their income from food sales more stable and predictable. 
but the challenge is to provide access to well-functioning commodity exchanges for farmers in poor agricultural countries. Currently, the biggest commodity exchanges are located in the developed countries, like the US, UK and Japan. Recognizing the challenge to access international exchanges, national and local exchanges have begun to develop. At this point, relatively successful local commodity exchanges exist in Brazil and Asia, and they are growing really fast. Financial markets and institutions can play a vital role in further facilitating access to international and national commodity exchanges. Next to financial markets, financial institutions can also make a difference by, for example, providing farmers with access to finance, insurance and other risk management tools to help them smooth their income. They can also invest in rural infrastructure and agricultural research in developing countries to support the production process. I invite you to explore what financial investors can do towards achieving zero hunger in the video by the Dutch Entrepreneurial Development Bank, FMO. And even you and me can make a difference by supporting local farmers, making sustainable food choices and fighting food waste, or making use of our power as a voter, demanding businesses and governments to make the choices promoting zero hunger. Together, we can work towards a sustainable, healthier and more inclusive future without hunger.